guys, how's it going? Alex Scott here with Concertini.com. Thank you so much for checking out another one of our super cool studio gear reviews. Today, we are taking a look at the Moore Black Truck, a combined effects pedal sent to us courtesy of the guys at Moore. So right off the bat, thank you very, very much to the team at Moore for sending this over. They also sent over the Red Truck, which is a very, very similar pedal, very similar layout, but somewhat different in its tone, um, which we're going to talk all about that in this lesson. I just finished reviewing that one. Now I'm going to take a look at this one, kind of compare and contrast the two. So if you haven't seen the Red Truck video yet, um, definitely go check that one out and be sure to subscribe to the channel. So in case Moore sends us any more pedals, you can check those out too. But regardless, Black Truck, very, very cool pedal. Again, they call it a combined effects pedal, which is kind of interesting. I think this differentiates it from a multi effects pedal, which, you know, we traditionally think of as more digital modeling, tons and tons of options, you know, multiple different overdrives, multiple different modulation type pedals. This is kind of similar, but is more focused on just a few higher quality modules, so to speak. So let's go ahead. I've got a camera set up here so we can take a look at the front of it and we will go over some of the features, how it's laid out. And then finally, I've got my Strat here. We've got our Fender Hot Rod George Benson signature all set up and we're going to run through some tones and see how it sounds. Okay guys, so Moore Black Truck. Now, it's very similar in build to the red truck. You know, it's the same kind of form factor. We've got the five foot switches, the different sections. Um, this one also has an effects loop. It's also a stereo unit, so you can run it left and right stereo. It also has a headphone jack. Also does not include a power supply, which is a little bit aggravating, but it does also come with the very cool little Moore truck case, just like the red truck does. And again, I, I, from what I understand, the gain and EQ stages are all analog. So we've got a compressor straight off the bat, then overdrive, then a high gain, which is like definitely a heavy duty distortion. And then EQ, that is all analog. EQ is switchable pre and post FX end. Uh, but then when we move into our last two sections, the modulation and space, uh, those I believe are digital, okay? So all analog, and then when we get here, um, it switches over to a little sort of digital section. Now again, combined effects unit, not as much a multi effects unit. So this one is really designed to just incorporate each of these different modules. There's not a ton of variability like you would find on a digital multi-effects pedal, like a Boss ME50 where there's like 20 different overdrive pedals modeled in it. This one just has a few basic ones, but because of that, they've been able to use more analog circuitry, which is going to help out the tone a little bit, not have that kind of digital edge to it. So again, starting at the top here, we have a compressor, volume, compression, amount, and then kind of a tilt EQ or a kind of a tone shaping EQ, which is interesting. It's very dark to the left and then brightens things up considerably and thins things out to the right. So I think of it kind of as a, a tilt, tilt shift kind of a situation. And then just single knob compression, which always irks me a little bit. I do like to be able to dial in my compression settings a little bit more precisely than just an all-in-one knob, but definitely works. This is the only one that just has a plain on-off switch as opposed to a foot switch uh, because I think they're intending that this is going to be left on some of the time. This is a little bit better of a thing to put in this slot with just the switch than the Red Truck. The Red Truck has a, has a boost right here, which guys want to mess with their boost all the time usually between, you know, they're soloing, they're not soloing. A compressor is something if you like playing with compression that you're probably just going to leave on uh, for the duration of your gig or your practice session, jam session, whatever. Moving from there, we move into the OD or overdrive section. This to me sounds a lot like the drive section that's in the red truck. So it's just kind of a general gain when it's turned down and then the more you turn it up, it gets a little bit fuzzy, a little bit crunchy. Then from there, we move into high gain. And this is kind of reminds me of a Proco Rat or something like that. It's a really screaming distortion unit. We've got a gate, um, which is very, very useful. Um, this mid switch, which I think helps to bring out some mid-range presence, gain, uh, output volume, tone, which again is kind of like the, this EQ knob on the compressor. It's kind of a tilt shift tone situation. And then this tweak knob, which to me kind of sounds, I mean, it just makes the circuit even dirtier. So when you crank that, that tweak knob up, it's going to really bring out that much more grit. Moving on from there, we've got this kind of five band graphic EQ with a level control as well, which is kind of cool. We've got 100 hertz, 250, 630, 1.4, and 4K. So a pretty decent selection of frequencies. And again, that is switchable pre and post effects loop. Now that is where the analog circuitry ends. Moving over here to the mod and space categories, we move into digital territory. So the mod is a combination phaser, tremolo, flanger, depending on what you select. 
We have color and range, which basically just affect the intensity of the effect. They kind of do different things on each one when we get into actually playing around the stuff, you'll see what exactly they do. It's kind of an interesting way to, to lay out modulation effects, but it makes sense once you get used to it. Um, and then rate, obviously pretty self-explanatory. And then we do have a tap for all of those, a tap tempo, so you can sync very, very easily. And this is how you kind of um, control your secondary rate or your sync. Um, which is very, very handy. Then from there, we've got this very cool space section. And this is basically combined of a delay, a reverb, or both at the same time. And the reverb sounds really, really nice. It's a very ambient style reverb. So it's sort of like a, a hall or a plate. It's definitely more in that direction than like a spring reverb, but you can crank the decay out to like 15 plus seconds. So it's it's nice for, for very ambient type reverb tones. And the delay is very, very simple. You've just got a, a time knob, a feedback knob, and a mix or level knob. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to be said about the delay. It's sort of a, somewhere in between an analog and a digital delay. It's pretty clean. There's not a ton of character to it, um, but it do, still does sound nice. And I think that the way that they've integrated those two effects into this one little section here is, is pretty cool. Now, I do find the flow interesting, and this is the same with the red truck, where they're labeled one through five going this way, starting with the reverb, but you actually run through the pedal sort of backwards. You come into the compressor, then overdrive, gain, EQ, and then into the modulation and reverb, which is how it should be in terms of how we normally order effects. But it's still just a little odd to me that they kind of laid it out to where you're, you know, I would have put the compressor over here and the reverb over here and then labeled it one through five. But, you know, maybe there's some other reason that they're doing that that I'm not familiar with or something. But in any case, you know, again, we've got our Fender Hot Rod George Benson signature setup. We've got an Octava Mark 319 large diaphragm condenser on the cone running into a Neve 1073 preamp. Got a Line 6 Variax, but I've just got it set up as a Strat right now, so pretty standard Strat tones. So let's go ahead and play around with some of the features on the black truck and, and see how it all sounds. Okay guys, so just a little clean first. That's fourth position, second position. Second position. So first of all, we have this compressor. Turn our volume up a little bit. Right now I have this EQ knob set flat and compressor right at noon. Without. With. And we can really crank the compressor. And just get a ton of sustain and like pop if you like that sound. I'm really not a huge fan of, of playing with compression. Um, but in the how this pedal works, it's kind of interesting because it actually ends up becoming an important part of your gain staging. There's a lot of ways to gain stage these first four sort of modules because you have pretty much gain and tone sort of on all of them. You know, for the compressor, we have compression and volume into the next one. Overdrive, we have gain and volume. And then high gain, we've got gain and volume. And then we've got a level on the EQ. So you have like seven gain and or drive and or volume knobs between those four modules. So you have a lot of options to gain stage it and kind of drive each section differently, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to be aware of that because you can get into like crazy loud or too quiet pretty easily. So we'll leave the compression on just a, just a little bit. We'll leave it about 50% across the board. Now let's kick in this overdrive here. And here is first of all, without any gain. Back the volume to compensate. And we'll also open up this tone knob a little bit. So again, you know, when you push the gain, it gets fuzzy. Um, when you've got it in the middle, it breaks up, breaks up a little bit, but it doesn't have to break up. You know, you can keep that gain low and really just use it as kind of a secondary boost. It's just a little bit of, of grit or hair to it. So that's the overdrive. Where the gain really comes in is this high gain section, okay? So starting with our volume low, because I don't want to blow you guys out of the room. Now, really, really gnarly. And that's with the gain at 50% and the tweak at 50%. If we really open that up and then open up that tweak kind of circuit. You really get thick 
and crunchy. Kick, kick in the overdrive. Then this is where you have to start being really careful with all your volume. <laughs> You can get into some really, really wicked tones really, really quickly, which is, you know, if you like heavy distortion, this is a good option. It definitely, these two drive sections create a lot more fuzz and a lot more distortion and get a lot more gritty than the red truck. Um, this is definitely more for like hard rock, metal, punk type players than the red truck is. The red truck is a little bit more vintage sounding, so we say. But, you know, I'm not really that kind of a player, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave this overdrive on mildly with a little bit of opening up of the tone, gain maybe 40%, something like that. Okay, so now EQ is pretty basic. You know, we'll boost, boost a little top end, cut a little low end. Gets a little brittle. But, you know, still, that's what a graphic EQ should do. And then if we roll off some top and bring out some low. Nice and thick. It's a good sounding, good sounding EQ. And definitely, you know, I can see this EQ being very, very useful for more kind of technical EQing stuff. If you run it post effects loop, you're running it out to some pedals, or you are using some heavier gain stuff and there's some nasty frequencies, this will let you um, dial out some of those common frequency uh, areas that can be problems, you know, 1.4K, 4K, where you can get some of that nasty distortion buildup. Um, very, very useful for that. So we'll just leave that off. Modulation. First of all, I'm going to set everything pretty much at noon, okay? So we'll go quarter inch. Color, range, rate, all at noon. Here's the phaser. So a nice kind of classic phaser sound. Now when we increase the color and range, it really just ramps up the intensity. Now, the, and the rate isn't nearly as fast as the rate on the modulation section of the black truck, which I think is good. The modulation section on the black truck almost turns into like a, a ring modulator if you push it too hard. It's kind of nice. Black hole sun kind of a sound with the phaser. Now the tremolo, the tremolo is really good for seeing what these color and range things do. So with the tremolo, our range becomes the depth of our tremolo. So maxed out, we've got full depth on the tremolo. And then when we bring it back, it's much, much, much more mellow. And then the color changes the, the shape of the, of the tremolo. So when it's all the way to the, to the left, it's a very sine wave type tremolo. And then when you push it over towards the left, or towards the right, excuse me, you get a very square wave. Very square wave type sound. Finally, we've got a flanger. Very old school vintage sounding flanger, which I really like. Reminds me of like No Quarter, some of those classic like Zeppelin effects, that kind of stuff. So that's modulation, pretty straightforward. And finally, we've got space. So let's first listen to the delay. That's really kind of a slapback thing, and it's in slapback territory up till about 50% of, like, that's 50% time. So anything faster than that, and you start getting into slapback territory, and you can definitely start hearing the digital nature of it. But then, of course, you can slow it down. And if you really start to push the feedback, just like any delay, it'll start doing that thing. But you can hear very much that it is more of a digital delay than it is an analog delay. So there is that. Now, the reverb. It's very, very stripped back. We just have a decay knob and a mix knob, but it's a really nice sounding reverb. This is decayed about 30%. And if we push the mix a little higher and we push that decay out to like 80, 90, 100%, you get a really nice 
organic, kind of dark, lush, ambient verb. to bring in the delay at the same time, which is really, really nice. and lush sounding combo it's it's actually pretty inspirational to play with if i do say so and I, i've got to say it's it's kind of interesting to me that they would include that reverb with this level of gain and distortion because like this whole half of the pedal to me just screams metal hard rock punk that kind of stuff this half of the pedal is a lot more ambient the fact that we can set this tremolo up to be very square wave like that always makes me think of very like electronic type sounds, you know, whether you're doing more electronic music or what have you. That's really what that style of tremolo reminds me of. And then, of course, you've got this big ambient reverb and this delay that you... It, it's a very... This side of the pedal is very ambient and very kind of lush sounding. This side of the pedal is all about, like, raw gain and fuzz and distortion and overdrive and all this kind of stuff. So that's interesting to me. You know, it, it's definitely a different approach than the Red Truck. Uh, the red truck it felt felt a little bit more unified. You know, you had a lot more options in terms of the reverb, um, but then the, the gains were dialed back a little bit. The, the red truck felt very much like an all arounder, you know, kind of a beginner newcomer uh, type pedal, where it was like, hey, I'm interested in expanding my effects collection, my pedal collection, but I'm not sure which direction I want to go. I want to be able to try out a number of different types of pedals that I could go down the road and buy dedicated units of, or, you know, dedicated pedals for that particular sound, tremolo or chorus or whatever, or a shimmer verb, if you like that, because uh, it did have a shimmer verb on it. Uh, but this one, by contrast, is just very unusual because the, like that reverb to me, because it's so ambient, it's a good sounding verb, but that's really where it shines. So it's like, I would look at these and say, wow, these would be great for somebody who's really into like ambient stuff, shoegaze stuff, um, real spacey sounds. But then if you're that kind of player, I don't think you're going to be using this insane, you know, high, you know, kind of 1980s hair metal sound. Those just don't go together for me. I actually, I think the, the individual sounds on this pedal are a little bit higher quality than the Red Truck. Like, that's a good sounding heavy distortion if you want that. The compressor seems to behave pretty well. Um, the EQ sounds real nice and has good frequency points. Um, modulation is pretty solid. I'd say that might be the weak unit, the, the, the weakest of the, of the five or the six here. Um, and then that reverb really sounds nice. You know, I could see myself using that reverb in a lot of different situations. But again there's a bit of a disconnect for me and like you've got this amazing insane distortion and then this really great ambient reverb those don't really go together and if you tried to play them together it's just a whole lot of woof and mud you know i'm sure if you spent some time you should you could get some really great like arena rock sounds between that verb and the delay and the and that gain and that'd be cool but i just it feels to me like the space and the modulation are more designed for ambient shoegaze indie type stuff and this gain and compression section is more for like hardcore players so that's just my you know thoughts my opinions though I, that's there are, i'm sure people out there who would dis disagree with me and, and get some really great tones with this unit um it retails for i think around 250 or 300 dollars something like that um, again thank you so much to the guys at moore for sending it out to me i've had a great time messing around with it it's definitely a very cool and very interesting pedal this one intrigues me and inspires me a little bit more than the red truck did uh, the red truck has a really nice delay section i liked the delay section on that one a lot but the distortions were just okay. Um, the boost was just okay. Again, I didn't like that they put the boost up here where it had a switch because boost is like 
for soloing, right? You kick it in for a solo and then you kick it out. And so having that little switch for a boost didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But in terms of just the quality of each module, I think the black truck shines a little bit more than the red truck does. Um, and I find that reverb really inspiring. And if I needed to track some really high gain, heavy duty stuff, um, I would definitely use the heck out of this high gain and overdrive section. Those are uh, pretty versatile, especially when you get into the tone shaping features and stuff like that. Um, they're good, they're good distortion uh, sound. So, so there is that. But regardless, what do you guys think? Have you used the black truck or the red truck? Have you used any other units like this that you prefer more? Or would you like to own these? Whatever your thoughts may be, definitely stick them in the comments down below. Again, big shout out to Moore. Thank you guys so much for sending me these pedals. Really, really dig them. Definitely going to find some ways to integrate them into my workflow. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, in any case, my name is Alex Scott with ConstantDean.com. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Click that notification bell to stay up to date with our new videos. Give this video a like or a share if you enjoyed it. But Regardless, I will see you in the next one. Thanks.